All right, let's get started, y'all. So this is for February 14th, so happy Valentine's Day. And if you're in my classes, you probably have realized that I'm not there. If you haven't realized that yet, um, hi, I'm not there. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's get into what we're doing today. So you should have already completed the warm up, and we're gonna go through this lesson. I'd recommend that you take notes on it. Um, you can take digital notes, you can take paper notes. Uh, all in all, this is more of a general concepts lesson because this is a new unit. We're covering a new function type, the exponential functions. So I'd strongly recommend take some notes, even if it's not complete and every single thing that I say today. Um, after we get through this, there is an assignment. The assignment for my class, at least, is due at the end of the period. So I'd strongly suggest you do it. So let's go ahead and get into this. Now, um, the exponential parent function. Well, there's not just one of them. Basically, the whole idea of the parent function is we want the simplest possible function for a given function type. Well, exponentials, what they are is we have some base, some number, and it's raised to the power of x. So that means that that number can be any number we want within some restrictions. So I can have two to the x, I can have five to the x, I have one half to the x, I have 0.7 to the x, I have all these different numbers raised to the power of x. Now, the restrictions are the number has to be positive and can't be one. We'll talk about why for both of those in a second. But assuming that you have a positive number, not one, you can raise it to a power of x and is a parent function. There's no transformation sign. So whenever it comes to identifying transformations, what we're gonna get into tomorrow, we always have to identify what's the actual parent function, what's being raised to a power. Also, dog Sophie decided to join us. Let's turn the camera to include her in the frame just a little bit. We'll move things over so that she can be included in this one. All right, so that's how these parent functions work. All right, so let's take a look at these different functions and let's identify them. So we have two to the x, six to the x, one half to the x, and 0 0.7 to the x. And if we put these all into our calculator, we'll get these tables. Do you have something to say? Okay, well, we'll see how it goes. And what's going on is these numbers, like two, six, one half, point seven, these bases are what's determining what we're multiplying by. So while they all start at one, you can see that for the two, we're multiplying by two every single time. For the six, we're multiplying by six every single time. One half, same deal, multiplying by one half. And the 0.7, we're multiplying by 0.7 every single time. Um, and so this allows us to identify some things pretty quickly. Uh, first off, the graph that's in black is our two to the x graph. The graph that's in purple is our six to the x graph. The graph that's in green, if I can switch to green, is our one half to the x power. And the graph that's in blue is our 0 0.7 to the x power graph. Um, <laughs> sorry, y'all, let me pause. We're not, are we done? All right. Sorry about that. Hopefully we didn't lose any headphone users. Um, anyway, uh, for these things, that's how we identify which graph is which. Now, you may also notice that all the graphs on the right side, all the ones that are going up on the right side, are the numbers that are bigger than one. Six and two are bigger than one. Now, all the ones that are going up on the left side are smaller than one. This will come into effect very, very soon. Just table that for now. So what do all these graphs have in common? Well, first off, they all have the same wires that they all go through this point right here, zero comma one. And that's because anything to the power of zero equals one. So if we don't have any other changes to the function, we'll go through that point. Also, all of these graphs kind of level out in the same way. They all have what we call an asymptote. You might notice these graphs going here get very, very close to the x-axis. 
these graphs going this way, get very, very close to the x-axis. What they get close to but don't quite touch, that's our asymptote. Because if we look back to our table, we'll notice here that these graphs are dividing, essentially, by 6 or by 2 as they go that way, or multiplying by 1 half or multiplying by decimal. And they get very, very small. It's okay. They get very, very small, but they don't actually touch zero. It's that annoying kid in class who's getting, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. That's what we're dealing with here. So they'll never touch it, but they'll get very, very close to it. And what that line is for all these parent functions is y equals zero. It's the x-axis. So because of that, um, our domain range are a little bit affected. Domain's going to be all real numbers because we are going both left and right on these graphs, uh, every single one of these graphs. Like, let's take this one half graph, it's going left here, and it's going right as it goes to the, goes to the right. And as far as our range, um, all these graphs are above that asymptote, so they are always going to be above zero. Um, so our range we could write as y is greater than zero, not equal to, because we never equal that number, or we could say it's from zero to infinity. And we put parentheses because we don't equal those numbers. We get close, but we don't equal. All right, now let's talk about the reasons why the base can't be negative or one. First off, negative. This is what it would look like for a base of, ne excuse me, base of negative two. And you can see what happens. So we have both a positive side and negative side. And really what's going on is negative numbers, if you have a negative times a negative, you get a positive. That means negative numbers raised to an even exponent, two, four, six, eight. So like if I have negative two to the fourth power, that's a positive number. But negatives by themselves are negatives raised to an odd exponent. Well, they are negative. Negative two to the third is negative. Negative two to the fifth is negative. So what we have is we have negative number, then positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And so we don't have a consistent single line. We just have a whole bunch of points that are bouncing back and forth. That's not really a function. That's not something that we can actually use. So for the sake of argument, no negative basis. Also, if your base is one, well, one to any power is one. This is just boring. We don't have an exponential graph. We have a flat line. So we just kind of say, mm, nah, let's die. That's why we can't use negative bases or a base of one. Okay, uh, let's talk about um, the general form of this stuff. Because while well, the parent function is b the base to an x power, a lot of the times the way we'll actually see it is a times b to the x power, where the a is the initial value or the y-intercept. Um, and then b is what we're multiplying by, our, our growth or our decay value. We'll worry about that, that growth and decay stuff in a second. So if I have something uh, two, five, 2 times 5 to the x, well, our initial value is 2, which means that when x is 0, y is 2. Where are we multiplying by each time? Well, as x goes up by 1, we multiply by 5. So 2 times 5 gives me 10. Five, 10 times 5 gives me 50. Times 5 again, 250. Times 5 again, 1,250. Times 5 again, 6,250. That's what's going on with these things. So that's kind of how this stuff works. All right, now let's talk about the big thing in the room, growth versus decay. Um, this all comes down to the basis. Now, for both these things, we're gonna assume that our a value is bigger than zero, because if you start with negative amounts of money and you grow negative amounts of money, you're losing more money. Um, so that, that gets really, really messy. We, we don't, if we can keep our a values positive, it makes a lot more sense as far as explaining this stuff. Just kind of keeps everything normal. Um, so what growths are, 
because they are where your base is bigger than one. We are multiplying by a big number. We get bigger answers, we grow. So two, 45, 1,000, 100, 5, 10, all these things have bases that are bigger than one. Versus decay are, is where it's smaller than one. Still has to be a positive number. So what we're left with is decimals or fractions for our base that are less than one. Obviously, if we have something like 1.5, that's bigger than one, that would be a growth factor. So that's kind of how this stuff works. Growth goes up into the right, decay goes down into the right as well. So how do you identify growth versus decay? Um, first thing was the basis. If we have equations, if your base is bigger than one, it's growth. This base is three fourths, it's less than one, so we have decay. Another thing we can use is a graph or a table. If as x goes up, y goes down, it's decay. If they both go up, then it's growth. Um, finally, uh, situations. We're going to be talking later in this unit about applications of this stuff and how we use it quite a bit. And um, having a sense whether or not something is a growth or a decay based on the context clues um, helps. So if someone says, I bought an NFT, you know it's gonna be a decay function. Those aren't going anywhere. Not, well, they're going places, but not good places. So that's kind of how this stuff works, okay? So let's go ahead and try it with these two examples here. Uh, feel free to pause the video, try it on your own, see if you can get uh, the same answers that I do. So this first one, this first one here, the initial value would be 0 0.3. Our base here is four. Four is bigger than one, so this is a growth factor. And is growing by four, four times. Our asymptote is going to be y equals zero because we don't have anything that changed that. The second problem, the initial value is 100. We are looking at a growth factor of 0 0.25, and, or decay factor, I should say, because this is decay, that is less than one. So 0 0.25 is our decay factor. Our asymptote is also y equals zero. So let me zoom back out. And that's really it, y'all. So hopefully that made some sense. Uh, I think we're about 13 minutes in, so hopefully that helps y'all. Go ahead and take a look at the assignment for today and best of luck. Have a good one.